Thanks for tuning in to your day off podcast, hosted by your boys, Corey and Tony. I think by the end of today, I might have another best friend. They're committed to making you fall in love with the hair industry, one podcast at a time. Uh, you're going to grab a lot of information. Yeah, you're going to learn a lot. Presented by Hair Industry. Ladies and gentlemen, this is it. Your day off podcast will begin after a word from our sponsors. My name's Gordon. Of course, I sit with my best friend Tony. What's up, buddy? What's going on, brother? Nothing. Where uh, it's it, it's 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 getting to early summer, so I'm pretty excited about that. L- I love the, uh, the 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 weathers. Oh man, especially today. Today is so beautiful outside. The sun shining. Although we've had rain for the last couple of weeks, everything's what makes it so nice about the rain for the last couple of weeks. Everything outside is so green. I know it's amazing. You right? know, yeah. Even your black car is green. It's all the pollen. <laughs> you know what? That's fair. You know, I look at my car, it makes me sneeze. You can kind of hear it now. I've got a little allergy thing going on now. I learned something. Uh, the pollen, you know, is from uh, male trees. From male trees? Male trees. Like females don't pollinate? I, does yeah. that make sense? I, I, I guess. Know. I don't know. But uh, I was watching TV and uh, they were talking about, you know, the Weather Channel was talking about the pollen and everything. They're talking about the po- all the pollens from the male trees. I've got a lot of male trees in my yard because my cars are covered in pollen. Oh, my God. I think my whole yard's male trees. I think I think you made your mind, too. <laughs> I think all we have is male trees. How do we have any other trees? I don't know. That's uh. crazy. You know what's amazing about trees? Oh my God, I can't believe we're going here. Is that they grow from the atmosphere, right? They don't grow up and they don't grow, they grow from the atmosphere, right? So, like the roots never grow, right? Or the, or the base of it just it gets thicker, but it doesn't really grow. Like if you were to mark a tree, that, that doesn't go up the tree, it always stays that height. Think about it. Think about the trees that you've had. Think about like, you know, when you're a kid and like yeah, when you and, notch it, when you notch it or you put a wire in it, that never grows up like 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 common or you think that a tree grows up, but a tree doesn't grow up. It grows out. That is so weird. I've never. That's what the rings are. Yeah. But then how does it. How does, I'm... Wow. Yeah. Now you just kind of blew my mind a little bit. Yeah. I think those are male and female trees. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hey, listen, so we have an expert that's coming on the podcast today, at least an expert in what she's done and what her experiences are. And I'm pretty excited about it. Um, it's something that we've chatted about quite a few times. Um, uh, she has been to um, a hair aid or a couple of hair aids, but we'll get into that. Um, listen, we're really, I feel connected to hair aid. We were supposed to go in 2021, but the world didn't let us. Um, but um, so, I mean, we, we're definitely like interested in, in, in trying to, to arrange to go back again. We've done a couple um, podcasts earlier, uh, like a few years ago, we did one with Selena, who is the uh, the founder of Hair Aid. Um, she's Australian and it's I think it's an Australian foundation or whatever they call it. And then we also did a podcast with Tabitha and Selena actually talking about Hair Aid, um, Tabitha Coffee, that is. So, um, but we've never really, aside from those two, we haven't really talked to anybody that's actually been on a, on on the retreat, and and certainly just a mere soldier on the retreat. And you know, um, I'm I'm interested in what the experience is like, and then maybe after this podcast, either we will will want to go even more, or maybe we're like, you know what, I don't want to do that, but you know, we'll get into that anyways. Uh, should we get in? Yeah, let's do it. So today our guest is Alana Zilkowski, and I just nailed it. Um, uh, is is Alana, and um, she's a, she's from Alberta, Canada, and she's going to kind of tell us and talk to her, us about her experience with hair age. Alana, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for having me. We finally get to get, get to do it. It's been it's been like I don't know, not quite a year, but but pretty close to a year since uh, we yeah. originally booked it, and then you know life happens again, as, as such things do. Alana, where where are you from? Uh, so I'm from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Were you, you that's like born and raised there? Yes. Wow. And it's funny because we, in pre talk, we were talking about, you know, uh, a, like she's, she's living in, in a, in a climate or a zone that we admire, you know, in the mountain time zone. Uh, she, she gets to see the Northern lights. You know, we were talking about pre talk about Northern lights. Uh, now we're talking about Harry. Like she's she's living all the things that we want to do, right? You want, <laughs> you know? right? Um, but uh, but you're right. You know, uh, born and raised in Alberta, Canada. Uh, you, uh, I mean, first of all, how did you find the industry? 
So I got into the industry when I was 15. I got a job in a salon as an apprentice. And I actually started because there was a poster up at the school looking for models for the local ABA hair show. So uh, my first experience into the hairdressing industry was actually being a model live on stage, getting my hair chopped off. And I was immediately just like, I love this atmosphere. I love this industry. This is what I want to do. The feeling that I got after having this transformational hairdo, I was like, this is the feeling I want to give other people. So I dove right in. That's amazing. Like, I, I, I kind of remember like in the, you know, when we used to go to the uh, the early hair shows and stuff, um, you know, as a, as a visitor, you know, things are different now, but when we went as a visitor and just being blown away by it and seeing all the talent on the stage and stuff and like being inspired by that. Yeah. But early it's funny because you know, it, no, no, I'm not, but it was like these huge transformation. You see a lot of the people who get their hair cut off running and crying, you know, cause it's such a, you know, and, but to draw you in from it, that's pretty impressive. Well, it's, it's funny about the hair shows too, cause it's not really the real hair world, right? No. It's just where we visit. So, uh, but that that's really that's really cool. Who uh um who cut your hair? Do you remember? Um, it was a Matrix artist. Oh. I unfortunately don't know their name, and it was before cell phone cameras and things like that. So I don't even have any pictures of it. It's amazing. Like when we when we went to the hair shows, certainly in the early '90s or mid '90s, even like early 2000s, how like it was the same old faces representing the brands, right? Like it was the same people at all the hair shows that were representing the brands. And then you know, with this thing called social media, now like the stages are filled up with lots and lots of faces. You know, it's just cool how the industry has for the most part, but usually it's the same faces at the shows. Just social media is different. (laughs) Yeah. However. You know, before when we went, it was like one face per brand. Oh, now, right. now there's many, many. You know, yeah. now the stage is filled is is filled with people. You know, so not better, or worse, or whatever. It just it just, just was. big. Yeah, your big companies. They yeah. got like ten, twelve artists. Yeah, yeah you're right. Exactly. You know, it's just, it's just there's just just a lot more um, people to see. You know, on, on the stages as opposed to you know the one. Yeah. You know the one, <laughs> the one Canadian, the one Canadian artist that's on on the stage there. That's, that's pretty cool. So how did you um tell it, walk us through your hair aid experience? Like, how did you hear about it? How did you know that you wanted to do it? All that good stuff. So I heard about hair aid first, probably about seven, eight years ago when Tabitha went to the her original Cambodia volunteer trip. And of course, I, as so many of our industry do absolutely love Tabitha. I grew up watching her, um, her TV show, Tabitha Salon Takeover. And she was like the shining example of like what I wanted to be in the industry. And when she posted about the volunteer project, when she went to Cambodia, I had never heard of Hair Aid before and immediately was drawn into it. Um, my two favorite things, traveling and hair. So I started following Hair Aid and waited until there was a project that aligned with my schedule and signed up. So where'd you go? How, first off, how many have you done? Just the one? So I've done two. I was in uh, the Philippines in January 2020. So it was the last project before everything got shut down. And then I volunteered again in January 2023 to the Philippines, which was the first project once they reopened. Wow. Oh, so you're you're on both ends of it, huh? Mm-hmm. So kind of walk us through like, you know, from the moment that you signed up to, you know, what communication you have with them, what you had to prepare for, all the all the good stuff. Give us the dirty details. Well, Selena and Herod have made it like super streamlined and seamless. So you can go onto the website. They've got the projects and the dates listed. You sign up, you put your deposit down, and then they reach out to you over email, typically um, with a lot of the frequently asked questions, when you need to get there, when you need to leave. So um, you can book flights. And then they do support you in any fundraising opportunities that you want to do to help fund um, your flights and the cost of the volunteer project. So real clear, or or if you can kind of explain it. So what is Hair Aid in the sense of like, when you go there, what are you doing? Who are the people that you're meeting? Who are the people that you're helping? You know, just kind of walk us through, like, we don't know anything. Okay, so Hair Aid is an Australian charity that's been around for about 12 years. And they do uh, volunteer-led projects in Thailand, Cambodia, uh, Indonesia, the Philippines. And most recently, they've started going to Guatemala. And you are teaching women basic haircutting skills so that they have the ability to earn an income and support their family. Is it anything to kind of like uh, uh, to be intimidated about as far as like, like, like for me, I'm not an instructor, right? So mm-hmm. 
kind of is there anything to be intimidated about that uh no not whatsoever they have um got a really good program to be able to teach the trainees but i personally um didn't have any instructor experience coming in and neither do i would say the vast majority of the volunteers so they really teach you how to teach them so you just need like a basic understanding of of, of how to cut hair that's pretty awesome. Do you bring your own tools? Or do they provide the tools? So they provide the tools. They don't want you to bring your own tools because we are very fortunate. I mean, I have like three pairs of seven hundred dollars scissors. That's not something that you want to be taking over there because it's um it's shiny, it's flashy, and it's not what they're going to be using on a day to day basis. So we work with the same tools that they are given at the end. So the trainees when they complete the week long volunteer project. And they're successively have learned the five haircuts. They get what is called a business in a bag. So they get a little pencil case with four clips, a comb, and a pair of scissors. And that is their business in a bag. And at the end of that, they can then go out and immediately start making money. So those are the tools that we train them on. How, how, I, and you know how difficult it is to learn a haircut. They're learning five haircuts in a week. Mm -hmm. Do are they grasping it? Are they, is there a continued education afterwards? Or is it something that, I mean, are they giving materials where they can reference? You would be absolutely flabbergasted to see how quickly someone picks up the skill of haircutting when the end goal is a life-changing ability to put food on your family's table. By the end of the first day, they are cutting a one length haircut on a live model and they are crushing it it is absolutely phenomenal to see wow that's so incredible now i i and if i'm wrong you, please tell me but selena was i when we and I'm, I'm trying to reference back a few years though but but a lot of the people that are come are either like sex workers or former sex workers was that your experience as well yeah so both of the times that i volunteered in the philippines i was volunteering at a drug rehabilitation facility so most of the women that I worked with had gotten into um, drug addiction via sex work. So their pimps had gotten them hooked on drugs. So the Drug Rehabilitation Center partnered with Harry to be able to teach them some skills so that when they graduated from the program, um, they were able to have a different ability of earning income. That, wow. that, that to me is just, inc it's just incredible. And, you know? and I guess, are they, are they kind of off the drugs? Are they in remission or... Are they, you know, it, because you see, unfortunately, you see so many times, you know, a drug addiction, uh, you see so many people relax, you know, just go back relapse. to it, relapse because it's, it, it's devastating. And, but when you see, when you're in a, uh, a country like that, that maybe they don't have all the, the support, like, like Canada or the U United States have on every block, I mean, <laughs> Do you guys check back in with these people to make sure that they're continuing to, to stay strong? Yeah. So everyone that we teach in the program at the location that I was at, so not every location is like that. Some of them you're teaching in community halls and churches. That's just the location that I was at. But for the women I was teaching, they were, um, they'd been a minimum of three months fully sober. Oh. And then afterwards, harried. Um, does check in with all the trainees. Um, there's a couple superstars in every project, so they can hook them up with uh, cosmetology schools or jobs within salons. And but Harry does have a very high success rate of people continuing to use the skills in the future. That's awesome. That's very cool. What um? What first off, how emotional is it? It's like devastatingly so in a way that you absolutely do not expect. Like the it's so humbling to share your skills to someone. And then also we're very privileged not to say that you and I haven't had our struggles growing up, but I wake up in the morning, I have a roof over my head, I have food in my stomach. And that's a reality that the people that we're teaching don't have access to. So it's, um, it is very, it's an emotional experience for sure. Yeah, that's what I In was all the best ways. When you said earlier, that you're teaching someone life-changing skills. And I'm like, how is it life-changing for you as well? You know what I mean? So to see uh, someone that, you, that you're literally helping change in their life. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. A lot of the women too, that I had taught had never been to any sort of formal schooling before. So 
it was impactful in the sense of there was a woman who she had said she didn't really like cutting hair and didn't see herself continuing it in the future. And I'm like, it's okay. No worries. She's like, but it's so nice to know that I can learn that I, that my hands can make me money. And you know, that's an experience she'd never had. And she was probably in her forties. Selena was telling us a story and I think it was at a woman's prison in Bali that she had a woman that was, that was, that took the class and it wasn't, it, she was taking the class because she wanted to be a chef, but it wasn't, but it was to that point. It wasn't necessarily like she was going to use the, this skill, but she was going to learn the school skill that she can learn to then do what she's really passionate about, which mm-hmm. I thought, like, I, and again, I'm, I'm recalling from a few years ago, but, but I thought like, wow, what a, what an incredible gift to give someone, you know? Mm-hmm. Okay. We talked about like, you don't bring your scissors and stuff. What do you pack as far as like clothing and stuff? Cause like, weren't there some rules with that as well? Not rules, but wasn't there some suggestions with that? Yeah, they ask that you come like kind of plain clothes. So they give you a hairy t-shirt and then you wear a pair of pants, but they ask like no fake eyelashes, no fake nails, no makeup. Um, just because we coming in as um, white hairdressers, educating them, it we're very intimidating to begin with. And we don't want to be distracting. Like I cover up my tattoos when we're there, you keep your hair tied back because we're there to teach them. We're not there for them to be distracted by our, um, you know, bling on our nails and our fancy makeup and things like that. And, and, and what's, again, I'm, I'm trying to recall a little bit, but weren't there like rules about like, like you have to ask to touch them or stuff like that, like just be sensitive to, to what their needs are. Yeah. So especially in Southeast Asia, um, the head is the highest point of the body. It's the closest to God. So you do ask before you touch someone's head. So you often touch them on your shoulders first. There's just a little bit of like that, um, the cultural differences that they're, they're really great at, at teaching you up front. And also the people that we're teaching are aware that we're coming into their culture and they're very understanding about any, you know, mix-ups that we may have. That's good. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at day five. Day five, uh, when they learn their final haircut, they test out, they get their business in a bag. Um, they, is there like a ceremony? Are you guys, is everybody like, is that a cry fest? Is everybody like, <laughs> you know, sobby? I mean, I can, I can only imagine what that day looked like. I know on day five, I'll be there. I'll be crying. Yeah. Yeah. So day five is graduation day. So in the morning, you finish up your haircuts, you do all your models. And then the afternoon, there's a graduation. They get a certificate with their name printed on it. And I mean, like they treasure that. And it is a very emotional day, not to scare any of your listeners that are like, oh, like, I don't want to go. I'm not a crier. Like, first of all, you will be. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it it really is because you have in the space of a week, changed someone's life you've changed your own in ways that you can't express but you have changed other people's lives just by taking the time to teach them and to show them that people care about them and that they are loved and that they are valued and they have the ability to um to learn this skill and then to give that gift to others and give someone a haircut and make them feel great and earn earn money as well that's amazing. I know that like uh I know that Tabitha and Celine, like they were they're trying to get more attention to it. You mm-hmm. know? Like how do we bring in more hairdressers? How do we bring so kind of break down like the two times that you went to the Philippines, how many for the lack of a better word, how many stylists were there teaching? Both times there was about sixteen to eighteen, I think. I think the maximum that Selena likes to have is twenty. Otherwise that gets to be quite a lot of people, even just going out for dinners and things like that. And yeah, it's raising awareness in, it is an Australian charity. So pretty much every hairdresser in Australia knows, knows what Harriet is. It's a very well-known, um, well-known volunteer project, but in North America, a lot of hairdressers have never heard of it before. And it's just kind of increasing awareness of the amazing work that can be done and, um, trying to let people know about it. Cause I didn't know about it and they'd been around for like five years. So spreading the good word those that that don't like flying what 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 south american country again that they're going to now guatemala guatemala so you know if you're afraid of that long flight over to to cambodia or the philippines um take the shorter flight to guatemala i mean there's (laughs) you know what i mean because you're you are truly 
truly impacting and changing lives. And I mean, I can't, I can't wait. And, and, you know, we're talking about maybe being able to go uh, again in 2025 in spring. Uh, and, and if that, if that happens, uh, you know, I, I can't, I can't wait. You know, I, I love teaching as it is, but to being able to, to teach like this and impacting and, and knowing that, that you're not teaching because it's a convenience to somebody you're teaching because it's a life change. Yeah. You're you know, just thinking about yeah. that. I get a little, little yeah, me too. chills on my neck and, and, it's, and it's not, and it's not for me. It's, it's strictly to, to just better the industry. Well, better their lives. Forget the industry. For yeah. Fact, you know, better their lives. Well, honestly, if every hairdresser volunteered with Harriet, I think our industry would be completely unrecognizable because the value that we then place on ourselves and our skills and the impact that it can have. But also I feel bad for people who are educators who go to Harriet and then come back home. I feel bad for their students because you're like, listen, I taught a Filipino woman who didn't speak any English how to do this haircut in less than 48 hours. Like, come on. <laughs> praise, you know, praise. That's crazy. Were there, um, so out of the 18 people that were there, were there, how many men were there? Uh, so there was three men on the first project in the Philippines. One of them is my husband. He has come with me for the last two projects and he's actually a professional gardener. So he, uh, does on the ground community garden work while we do the haircutting and then our second project, um, my husband was there again, and we had two guys again, I think. So we could definitely use more men, especially um, in Bali and the Philippines, where they're trying to get into more teaching barbering, for sure. There's a huge demand for that. Oh, Bali. Um, we, we have to go to Bali. Come on, who wants to go to Bali? <laughs> That's amazing. Know. You know what? You know what's crazy about this, Alana. And I'm just, just to be honest, like you don't think of Bali as like this, like third world country. You think of it as, as mm -hmm. this like, vacation, like you know, resort, right? Yeah. So you don't really think of it as as that they would need, you know, this type of this type of stuff. But it, it, honestly, it was when we first had the conversation with Selena that I was like, oh, I guess there is like a different side to all these, you know, wonderful places that that, that we're privileged to go to. Yeah, I had a nephew. He's 24, 25, 20, 24. 25 26 <clears throat> he decided he, he he needed a break so he just went to bali all by himself for a month i, I should have gone with him i should have been his <laughs> porter i uh, know like he uh he learned how to scuba dive there i mean it, it, all the pictures that he had respect to is it, what you're talking about like the resorts but uh you, that's all you see that's all you know when that's, you see when yeah. you see bali but obviously there's a whole another side of bali so Alana, so with the uh with the 18 stylists that are there, the 20 stylists, we'll call it, how many how many students are there? So how many people are you are you able to impact while you're there individually? Um it depends on kind of how many locations there are, how many volunteers, how many trainees sign up. Uh, but I believe around 100 to 120 per project because each location, I think the last time there was five locations, two to three hairdressers at each location. And I think we graduated 25 okay, people I'm at ours. Used right now. I'm super confused. So okay. Okay. So it's a five day program. We're teaching five different haircuts, but then there's yes. different locations. Yes. So there's, I believe there was five locations in my most recent trip to the Philippines. And there was myself and one other hairdresser teaching our 25 people. And some locations had three hairdressers, some locations had two, depending. Um, both myself and Nicole had been on previous hair aid projects. So we kind of knew knew the drill a little bit more. So in the morning, all 20 hairdressers are together. We do a morning debrief and then we kind of split off and go to our different locations for the day. And then we come back to the hotel at the end of the night. But each of us are like kind of taking care of our own group of 20 people. So it's not like 20 hairdressers working as like where there's 120 students. Like it's all segregated into like, no. <laughs> it looks like close to 200 students. Yeah. That's pretty cool, man. Mm. That's very cool. Okay. A uh, big question, and, and anybody that's listening is going to ask, like, A, how do you volunteer? B, does it cost anything? C, we know it does. So how do we how do we raise money? How do, how, how do we get, like, community support um, to, uh, to, to be able to go? Mm -hmm. uh, so first question is how to sign up. You can just sign up online. Um, it's very easy. If you have any questions before you sign up, there's emails. Um, you can always reach out to me. You can reach out to Selena, previous people. And then so the cost, depending on the location, um, is about $1,500 American. Um, the price on the website is in 
um, uh, Australian dollars, you need to do the conversion. It's I think like seven to 70 to one or something like that, or it's seven. Yeah. So it's about $1,500. And then the cost of your flights, the cost, uh, the $1,500 covers your hotel accommodation. It covers the insurance, your transportation when you're there, kind of like all that on the ground costs. And they provide a lot of suggestions and handholding on how to do different fundraising events. How are you, um, how nervous were you on the very first trip? Well, you're with your husband too. So that was, at least you had somebody, you know, mm -hmm. but, but how were you, were you nervous about like meeting, meeting the, uh, the students and just getting to know them and stuff? Or was it just walk me through that? Cause I'm nervous uh, for you right now, to be honest. Yeah. Well, I'm super fortunate that I've traveled a lot in my life. So I had actually previously been to the Philippines traveling and scuba diving, which like you said, you know, you're seeing more the glamorized side of it as opposed to the wealth disparity. But I wasn't nervous about the actual traveling aspect. I was nervous um, that I didn't have enough knowledge to give. And that's kind of, that was like the imposter syndrome of like, who am I to be teaching these people? Um, but you do have the knowledge and you you do have it, but it was it was nervous. Like I think any anything out of your comfort zone um, should make you nervous. That's how you grow. That's a hundred. Did you ever feel um, like you know? If, I'm gonna kind of go down a uh, just do it. <laughs> <laughs> like you know, these drug dealers and these pimps. I mean, that's two hundred. That's two hundred soldiers you're taking from them. Kind of like weirdly saying. Uh, do you ever feel threatened? Do, do, pe do people ever feel unsafe? I mean, how, I guess they're, I guess they got them kind of protected for three months first or whatever, but d does anybody ever, ever feel unsafe? Uh, no, I personally have never felt unsafe at all. Uh, Harried has made it a very like comfortable, like comfortable and safe experience. And for the facility that I was in, there was like, there was a gate to get in, there was security and things like that. And I do believe that when they're placing the women in drug rehabilitation centers, they're locating them to different areas of the city so that they're kind of removed from the community that they were in previously to not have that. Did you and your husband, did you guys get there a couple of days earlier? Did you stay a couple of days later? Yes. Both of the, both of the times we've kind of tied traveling and vacation into it. So we will typically go for a week either before or afterwards. Um, scuba diving beach time kind of tie a vacation in as well so you make a whole vacation out of it huh oh yeah may as well you're already over you there you guys next time i know right i just want to i just want to brush up on my non-gardening skills right <laughs> and a little scuba dive right you, yeah, so went, certified sorry you certified scuba yes i i have my advanced open water uh when we were in the philippines last time i went scuba diving with whale sharks what <gasps> yeah what was that it was amazing. How deep? Uh, so I'm advanced. So I'm certified up to 30 meters. The whale sharks was kind of more top level. I think we went down to like eight to 10 meters because they're blown above us. Yeah, I'm I'm certified the same. So that's yeah. all right. You're certified at 30 meters? Yeah. That's pretty cool. You guys got to go together. Well, it's 33, right? Yeah. 33 meters. Well, maybe Canadian. They, uh, they take all, they, 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 they remove that. Tape <laughs> <from> that. <laughs> Different <Yeah>. meters. <laughs> so dumb. That's great. So, okay. So uh, what's the lowdown? So uh, give us the website, give us all the things. So it's um, harried.au.org. Uh, I'm sure I'll link it in the show notes and they typically have five to 10 projects a year. They have the rest of the year listed um, on their website, and they're going to be announcing the 2025 dates soon if they haven't already in the last week. Yeah, I haven't seen them. I keep looking because I'm trying to get those exact dates because uh, uh, we were talking pre-talk that I've actually next May, May 2025, I've got a wedding in Cancun. Um, but I'm trying to I'm trying to make it to Hair Aid too, so I'm just hoping that it's not that same week, you know. Or maybe it's the week after, and you can just fly from Cancun over, and I'll just meet you there. I'm not doing that. Uh, we're flying together. I'm not doing that flight. <laughs> And how many flights are there from Cancun to 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 to, to Cambodia? I'll just meet you in uh, like San Francisco or L.A. or which way do we fly? We fly that way. I'm assuming going out, right? 
I guess. I don't know. She's in Alberta. She's definitely going that way. Yeah. <laughs> you know, she, she's halfway around the world the other way. That's crazy. Okay. That's so cool. Thank you so much. Hey, I mean, just thank you for representing the, the industry as a whole. And, and thank you for, uh, for, for doing this. Um, you have anything uh, you want to add before we jump off here? Uh, just that if you have any questions, you can always reach out to me. I really appreciate you guys having me on the podcast because it's just getting the word out there to people, your listeners who may have never heard of Harried before. Um, and if you're not sure if you should do it or not, I highly, highly recommend it. It is a beautiful experience. You get to see the world, you get to meet other fantastic hairdressers. Um, and I just, I can't impress how impactful it is to be able to share those skills with people. So before we jump on, how many people, um, from around the world were in your 18? Oh, that's a good question. So I was the only, so the first time I was the only Canadian besides Alan. And there was three people from the UK, three people from Sweden, four from the States and the rest were from Australia. And then the most recent one, there was a uh, Canadian, UK, Australian, and maybe one other nationality, but it is typically mostly Australians. Do uh do you still stay in contact with a lot of them uh, on both both your trips today? Or did you guys become friends? Yeah, definitely. Um, it's definitely a bonding experience. I still chat regularly with quite a few of the people. We've got a Facebook group and we kind of check in. Happy birthdays, how everyone's doing. But it's uh, it's a very intense bonding experience. It's got to be. Yeah, that's know. I mean, even that I mean. To, to be able to bond with, you know, your, your fellow hairdressers from around the world and, and make mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's amazing. What, well, what it does is just shrinks the industry some more. Right. Yeah. Like it just like, Whoa, Oh, we're, we're, we're mm -hmm. still on this, you know, whether you're cutting hair in Australia or whatever, are you going to Guatemala? Did you say that? Yeah, I'll be going to Guatemala, uh, end of October. I should probably look at booking flights to be honest. I should get on that. But, um, I think it's October 18th, no, October 11th. 11th to the 18th in Guatemala, and there is still spots open. Um, I believe there's only a couple left and more so for next year. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Alana, uh, how can people find you? You said to reach out to you. Where the hell can we find you? How do we reach out to you? Yeah, so you can find me on Instagram, Breeze Web Designs, and my website is breezewebdesigns.com. You can always DM me. You can send me an email um, and ask me any questions that you want. And when you say Breeze, that's B-R-E-E-Z-E? -E? Yes. Like a that's summer nice. breeze gotcha. on the ocean. You can always be her BF and meet her in Guatemala. That's it. Yeah. She'll be there. We know where she'll be October 11th through the 18th. <laughs> well, oh, well, does Selena go on all the trips? She goes on almost all of them. She is working on having specific locations have kind of more of a leader so that she is able to step away a little bit more um, so it can be sustainable without, without her moving in the future. But she will be in Guatemala. I definitely recommend you going back a couple of years. Again, it is a couple of years old, so I'm I don't I'm not sure what's changed as far as post, you know, when the world shut down kind of thing. Mm -hmm. However, I definitely uh, recommend anybody that's listening in that wants to get more information too, or just kind of about what the foundation does and who they are and why they started mm -hmm. and all that good stuff. Um, definitely check out uh, uh, the one that we did with Selena. Um, I think it's just called Selena Harried. So uh, if you can just look up hair industry or your day off, uh, uh, Selena Harried. Um, we did a whole episode with her, but um, but. Alana, thank you so much. Again, thank you for doing it with us. Thank you for hanging out with us. And thank you very, very much for joining us on your day off. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast, share it with friends, give us a rating and drop a review. To listen to all the latest podcasts, please subscribe from your favorite podcast outlet. And to stay connected on and off the show, you can follow us at Hairdistry on Instagram and all other social media platforms. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time. Peace and love.